Hi guys, uh, in the last class we have talked about the induction machine torque production. So we'll be seeing some of the torque related to the torque. So let's see the first question. Okay, so get 2007 question. So one of the questions is a three phase parallel gas induction motor has a starting torque of 150 percentage. Sorry guys, I had got repeated twice. And a maximum torque of 300 percentage. Respective rated torque, rated voltage and rated frequency. Neglecting the data resistance and rotational losses, the value of the slip for maximum torque is. So earlier we have done uh, iteration, right? Starting torque, the ratio of starting torque by maximum torque equal to, torque equal to 2a by 1 plus a square. They're asking us to find out the value of slip at a maximum torque. Ratio, how much they have starting torque, starting torque of one fifty percentage. Torque at percentage. These are with respect to rate of torque. The rate. This uses one point five by three. So two a one that is equal to. 1 by 2 so a by 1 plus a square equal to 1 by 2 4a equal to 1 plus a square a square minus 4a plus 1 equal to 0 if i solve this quadratic equation we'll be getting a is equal to 0.2679 that is 26.79 percentage so the answer is option d Okay, let's go to the next question. Eight nineteen ninety six question. The supply voltage to an induction motor is reduced by ten percentage. The maximum torque will be reduced by approximately how much? Let's try to solve this question. We know that T maximum is proportional to T2 square. That is proportional to T1 square, which is nothing but the supply voltage square. So T max 1 by T max 2 equal to T1 by V2 whole square. So they have specified that the voltage is reduced by 10 percentage, which means V2 equal to 0.9 times V1. So T max 1 by T max 2 equal to V1 by 0.9 V1 
whole square. So this gives us P max 2 equal to 0 0.81 P max 1. So the maximum torque will decrease by 81 percentage. Okay, there are a few more questions we will see that later on. So let's go to the next stop that is induction machine test. So there are two types of testings. One is the no load test, other one is the load test. So first we'll start with the no load test. No load test. So this test is done at rated voltage. Comma rated frequency. And this test is done to find out the shunt to bank parameters of the equivalent circuit uh, that gives us the no load losses mostly and the constant losses, which are nothing constant losses. And the no load test of an induction machine is generally similar to so using this test, we are going to find out the constant losses. And this test is similar to OC test, open circuit test of a transformer. So let me draw the circuit diagram. So this is a three phase auto transformer. So we have tabs here and here. These are connected, and this is the voltmeter. And we have a meter here, here, and here. <laughs> and then we have watt meter here. This is one watt meter. We have one more watt meter here. These three go, this is an three phase split the motor stator, and this is a rat around which is connected to a drum. Or pulley and the pulley is uh, held constant fixed okay so this no load test consists of two watt meters watt meter one and watt meter two which are connected between the <laughs> this is the three phase supply this is the three phase supply and this is our machine which are connected between the three phase supply and the machine so uh, the sum of these watt meter readings, that is W1 plus W2 gives us the losses. It is the constant losses. Uh, these losses equal to first one constant losses plus data copper loss. Uh, actually for no load test, uh, generally uh, MR, rotor rotating speed is approximate equal to the synchronous speed. So that is is approximately zero. Okay. And no load current is very small. So I can say you can ignore the data copper losses. So then we'll be having only constant losses, which are divided into two types. That is core loss, and the other one is the mechanical loss. So 
So this test is done to find out the shunt branch parameters of an induction machine. That is, this is the shunt branch parameter, right? So we are applying the voltage here and we are measuring the current here. One is RC, this is XL, the current is I mu and this current is I W. Okay. Okay, that's all for no no test. Let's go to the next slide. So this is what we have seen in the earlier slide. And the next test is the load test or called drop drop test. The second type of test is a block or test. The objectives of this test includes to find out the series branch parameter. So earlier in the no load test, we found out the shunt branch parameter. So in the block test, we are going to find out the series branch parameters. That is R01 and X01. After referring the rotor circuit resistance and reactance to the tatar side we will be getting r01 and 01 and this test is also used to find out the full load pop process full load pop process and this test is similar to short circuit test on transformer Generally, the equivalent circuit of an induction machine during the block rotor test looks something like this. So we have the shunt branch parameters, and then we have the series branch parameters, and then actually here we will be having the equivalent mechanical load. But since we are block rotor test, so there won't be any mechanical output so that's why it is represented as a short circuit okay this is the supply and this is the here also two watt meters are used so the sum of these two watt meters uses the losses because we know that input equal to output plus loss. Since there is no output, so input is nothing but the rate measured by the watt meters. So that is nothing but loss, which is approximately equal to copper loss at full load. So this one, this is R01 plus X01 equal to Z01 can be given as PBR, proper or voltage by phase current. So that once we got Z01, we can find X01 using Z01 square minus R01 square. And how to find the R01? R01 is nothing but uh, it represents the top process at full load. So we write full load plus W equal to 3 I R square R01. So we know the value of the current is the rotor. Yeah. So then we can calculate R01. Once we get R01, we know the Z01, we can find Z01.
ओके द सॉल्व फॉर ब्लॉक ड्रॉट ऑन टेस्ट विल बी सीइंग सम ऑफ द प्रीवियस ईयर गेट क्वेश्चंस Okay, let's go to the next question. Three phase four pole self-excited induction generator is feeding power to a load at frequency F1. If the load is partially removed, the frequency becomes F2. Speed of the generator is to be maintained at 1500 RPM in both the cases then of the following conditions are true. We know that NS equal to 120 F by P, right? So I can calculate F equal to NS into P by 120. Let's say N is 1500 RPM. P is four poles. We have 120, 0, 0, 3. So it is 50 H. The speed of the generator is to be maintained at 1500 RPM. Generally, for synchronous machine, NR is less than NS, mean, if, uh, sorry, for induction motor. For a generator, general NR will be greater than NS. For a four pole machine, so using 1500 RPM. So initial frequency is F1. When the load is removed, the new frequency is F2. So what happens when the load remove, gets removed, what happens is generally the speed increases. So F2 will be greater than F1. And both the frequencies will always be less than 50 hedges. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay, 1998 question. Say three phase squirrel case induction motor has a full load efficiency of 0.8. 
or 80 percentage and a maximum efficiency of 0.9 or 90 percentage it is operated at a slip of 0.6 by applying a reduced voltage the efficiency of motor at the operating point is They have given us the slip equal to 0.6. Now, right? the slip is given by omega s minus omega r by omega r. And the other approximate uh, efficiency formula of an induction machine is omega r by omega s. So, if you solve this equation, omega r by s minus omega r by omega r equal to 0.6, we'll get omega r by omega s equal to 0.4. So this is 0.4 will be less than Let's go to the next question. So the next question is a gate 2010 question. A balanced three phase voltage is applied to a star connected and motor. The phase to neutral voltage being B, the stator resistance, rotor resistance referred to the, the stator resistance and the res reactance are referred to the rotor. Sorry, sorry. Uh, the raw. Yeah, it's a mistake. This is the rotor. The rotor resistance and rotor reactance are referred to the stator. And stator leakage reactance and rotor leakage reactance are also referred to the stator. It means they, they are saying that the entire rotor circuit uh, parameters or elements are referred to the stator side. They have given that magnetizing reactance is denoted by XM. Uh, I guess don't get uh, actually the question order, it was something wrong. Okay, so what they are saying is RS is the stator resistance, RR is the rotor resistance. Okay, this is referred to the primary side, uh, stator side. So XS is the stator reactance okay xm is a magnetizing reactance okay there is one more uh, let me draw the circuit okay that then it will be clear so, uh, we have shunt branch parameter that is rc x represent magnetization part and then we have r at level so this is rs this is stator resistance and stator reactors and then we have r and x this these are the water resistance and reactors referred to the Stator. And then we have the mechanical equivalent electrical load that is RR into 1 by S minus 1. Now they are applying a voltage V across this. They want to find out the starting current. Since it is a parallel, this is also V. So they want this current IST. Understand. So under starting slip equal to one, so this becomes zero. So IST equal to V by square root of RS plus RR square plus XS plus XR whole square.
Okay, let's go to the next question. The Lockwood rotor current in a three phase star connected 15 kilowatt, four pole, 230 volts, 50 H induction motor at rated condition is 50 amps. Neglecting losses and magnetizing current, the approximate Lockwood rotor line current drawn when the motor is connected to a 260 volts, 50 H supply. So they're saying neglecting losses and magnetizing current. So when we neglect the losses and the magnetizing component, then the circuit looks something like this. We have the supply voltage and then we'll be having X01. This is ISC. Or I, I equal to V by X01. So I is proportional to V by frequency. So I1 by I2 equal to V1 by V2 into F2 by F1. So initially it is taking 50. After that we don't know. We have to find it out. The supply voltage V1 is 230 volts. V2 is 236 volts. The frequency F2 is 57 and F1 is 50H. So if we solve this we can find out the Lockwood rotor line current drawn. Yeah, let's go to the next question. The 400 volts, 50 H, 
So in rates of reduced voltage charge, what they will do is they will use a reactors and then they will take taps here. And this is connected to the starter of an induction machine. So for these kind of a starters, the ratio of starter to full load torque is given by x square into IC by I full load whole square into S full load. So X is a percentage of supply voltage applied to the starter of an induction motor. So this method is uh, advantage for uh, advantage of these methods includes good efficiency with high value of efficiency. Disadvantage is uh, starting current. So the reduction in starting current is less. And reduction in starting part is more. Uh, so that's why this kind of starting method results in poor starting performance. Okay, and there are uh, three more ma starting methods. Uh, let's see that. And next we have series resistance. And here we have seen series reactor starter. So here we will use a resistance of reactors so there will be tabs and these tabs are connected to the induction uh, this method results in good starting performance but uh, the efficiency will be less uh, so this method is not suitable for uh, starting induction motors loads and the next method is an auto transformer so auto transformer we know right this, this is a primary and this is a sector we have up here and here we'll be connecting to the intersection i have found the srt generally the three phase diagram okay so here for a auto transformer the ratio of starting to full load torque is given by k square into isc by I full load square into s full load so this k is called Transformer ratio. Okay. So uh, using this method, the start current will be reduced by k square times. Similarly, the starting torque also reduced by k square times. The next one is a star delta method. Star delta start. So in this method, initially the motor is started using star connection. And then the uh, standard connection is changed to the delta. So initially the machine standard will be in the star connection. After that, it will be changed to the delta connection. So this, if you take ratio of star to full load torque, it gives one by three into by C by full load square. Yes, full load. If you take the comparison table for among these three starts, let's say starting current and starting current. Let's say we are using a direct online start. The starting current is 100 amps and torque is 100. This is for example, okay? Now when x equal to 0.5, that in case of series reactor starter, we know that it will be x squared. 
start that will only be it will be x times whereas the north is where so it will be 25 see and if you take the auto transform starter with a equal to 0.5 the start that will also be 25 and north is also 25 because square times take a delta star delta start method start that will be reduced by three times whereas the torque will also reduce by three times here you see these two methods the reduction in start torque is more the reduction in starting point is less that's why this method is not so much from the auto platform from star methods Okay, let's go to the next point that is emission mission speed. So this is what we have discussed earlier, right? The one is carried online starter, reduced voltage starters include series reactor starter as well as a series resistance starter. Then we have auto transform starting method, and finally we have the star delta star. Speed control. So the advantages of why we need a speed control because we because it, uh, it includes an advantages like smooth silent operation of the machine and as well as the power savings. So the speed control of an induction machine is classified into two types. One is slip control techniques. The other one is a synchronous speed control techniques. Slip control techniques we have three. One is voltage control method. The other one is a rotor resistance control method the next one is the emf injection in synchronous speed control technique we have voltage changing method supply frequency control method other one is a cascading method We know that nr equal to ns into 1 minus right so s is on poles by changing proposed we can change the ns thereby nr can be changed changing the supply between ns can also be varied because of which nr can be varied So let's see the voltage control method. In voltage control method, the supply voltage is varied to get desired speed. Supply voltage will be varied. So this method, using this method, we can get speeds below rated speed. So conditions uh, satisfied in the voltage control is S1 V1 equal to S2 V2 square. This is a slip one, slip the voltage one and the voltage. The next one is a rotor resistance control. In this method, the rotor resistance is varied by means of an external insert an external resistance into the rotor circuit. This type of method is suitable only for a slipping machine because there we have an provision to add an external resistance to the machine circuit. That are secured. Sorry, not that circuit. So this method is suitable for add of a narrow speed control. And this is also used for speeds below rated speeds. This method results in uh, more losses, that is copper loss, because we are adding an external resistance in the rotors, because of which the efficiency of this method is less. So the condition for this kind of a control speed control is S1 by RR. This is the initial slip and rot resistance equal to S2 by RR plus RE. This is external resistance. This is the after adding an external resistance RE, S2 uh, is a slip.
Next, we have an EMF injection method. In EMF injection method, generally an external voltage EE will be inserted into the rotor circuit. Uh, let's say our actual rotor voltage is ER. So, uh, satisfied for this speed control is S1 ER square. These are the initial slip of the rotor voltage square equal to S2 into ER minus EE square. Okay, using this method, we can above speeds, uh, above rated speed be achieved. There are two types of injections that is, in phase injection and out of phase injection. In phase injection means both ER and EE will be in the same phase. Out of phase means EE and ER will talk this. They will get subtracted. Uh, this method is very costly method because we need an external equipment to insert this external voltage into the rotor circuit. The next one is the final method is the supply frequency control method. So in this method, both speeds, above rated speed as well as below rated speeds can be achieved. For speeds, below rated speed, uh, this type of control is called variable voltage, variable frequency method. It means both voltage and frequency are varied such that the V by F ratio remains constant. So in VBF method, V method, condition to be satisfied is NS1 minus NR1 equal to S2 minus NR. Okay, let's see one example question on the information speed control. And this is what we have seen earlier, voltage control method, rotor resistance method, and then we have an EMF injection method and the frequency control method. Uh, let's try to solve this question. So a three-phase 50H four four pole induction motor runs at no load with of one percentage with full load. This increase to five percentage. They are asking us to find out the speed regulation of the motor. They have given P equal to four, F equal to fifty. So NS equal to one twenty F by P. So that gives fifteen hundred RPM. Right? We know that NR equal to NS into one minus S that says no load. So that is NS into one minus initial no load is one percentage, right? So this gives you 1485 RPM. Similar NR during full load, equal to NS into one minus S full load. So that is NS into one minus five percentage. This gives 1425 RPM. Now the speed regulation equal to speed no load minus speed full load by speed full load into 100 so that is so all this equation will be getting 4.21 percentage okay that's all uh, for today's class in the next class we'll start with the chronospections